Hey everybody, Tracy Brown here, your somatic nutrition uh, dietitian and coach and intuitive eating expert. And we are going to talk today about that piece of metal that we think we need to know about. And oftentimes it kind of runs our show and we want to diminish that obviously in our lives. So I'm gonna get a different view. Oh, much better. That glare was in my face. It's a little better. Mm, let's try this. Okay. Uh, that'll have to work. Anyway, the sun's coming right here toward my face. So anyway, um, there's a lot of different ways to look at this, what I would do about the scale. But the first, first question you need to answer is, before we even go further, is, is knowing the number or even the, the acts of wanting to get on that scale going to help me? Going to help me in my recovery or um, going to benefit... Um, honestly, my health or anything else. So you need to be able to answer that question first. It's me knowing the number or even, I hate to use the word ritual, but the, even the steps towards weighing yourself. If you feel in your system, like <sighs> anticipation, dread, you know, if you know in your head that the past has been like, when I weigh myself, I weigh less, I feel better. If I weigh myself on more, I feel worse. It may not be your friend. And that curiosity to know, that's what I want you to be curious about. Um, it's really, really important that you consider curiosity and what that really is about. And I would put my money down on, often when we want to weigh the scale, we've got some other anticipation going on. We're not trusting ourselves, not trusting the process. That's totally understandable. I get it because it's all new for most of us. Well, it's better. Um, so a lot of things to consider when you're curious. We're going to come back to some of those. Now, there are exceptions. I have a few exceptions with some clients that, um, you know, I see people all over the world. I see people in my community and it really varies what's best for each person. Now, occasionally I'll get a circumstance where, you know what, it's a, it's motivating because let's say, I'm sorry, that sun is totally in my face. I'm trying to like block. Um, there we go. There are very few exceptions, but occasionally a person seeing the number because they are purposely trying to gain weight and they want to and they know that's good for them, knowing just helps them know on the right track, they're great. They do it, that's fine. Most of us though, I'd say 99% of us don't need to know. Um, if you're a person, it's like if I don't know or if I don't know that somebody else knows that I trust, um, I'm probably going to restrict, which is going to cause binging and off on the circle I go. So it may be that you do need somebody to hold the number, to hold that space. And again, you're going to have to be working with somebody professionally to do that with you. And I don't necessarily think that's a bad idea, but it's not a permanent solution to, to helping you feel safe enough to move forward with full permission to eat, um, to kind of keep, I, I see this happen a lot that people put the brakes on their intuitive eating process because of fear of weight gain. So they, always underestimate their needs. They don't ever eat enough. Um, even though, you know, and I can tell that them through their eating. I tell, I can tell people that just by looking at their food intellectually, I can tell it through the sensations they're getting with their body experience, what they, what the reporting is. Um, but oftentimes if people, you know, aren't sure what's happening with their weight. That's what needs to be worked on. It's not necessarily about that you need to know the number to feel like you're making progress or that you're safe, is that we gotta work on the fat phobia. We've gotta work on feeling safe in our bodies and our interceptive stability, meaning I know inside what I feel and what's happening and I, I trust it and I know what's good and what's not good, um, all those things. So. Oftentimes we get on the scale because our inner experience is, is jangly and all over the place. And so we look for external thing to preoccupy us. We think it's going to give us relief, but we all know how that the drill goes. Like you weigh yourself, but then you want to weigh yourself again and again and again. There's never like, oh, I weighed myself once and I did it again like, you know, nine and two thirds months later because I happen to think of it. That's not how it works, right? It's like if you just you're thinking if the scale is a constant part of your life, meaning you weigh yourself as much as you get an opportunity to do, you're using it for something else. It's not really about the information. Um, so I hope that helps. I mean, a lot of people need it for reassurance in their recovery process, but I recommend you do that with somebody 
that you can trust to process it accurately versus somebody say, oh yeah, you're fine, or you're at a good stopping place. Well, nobody else could, could know that. That's really about a collaboration with uh, the people you know, who are helping you, and, but mostly your own body and where you feel less um, not at ease or trusting of being in your body. So I hope this helps. I guess the main stay of the story is don't weigh yourself. Stay off the scale. Stay off of it. If you have to go to the doctor's office, do a blind weight. You know, really advocate for yourself in that way. And you may not, may not even need to call them ahead of time and say, hey, please don't do this. And you don't have to give them all the reasons why. Um, you don't have to rationalize everything. Um, but really protect this because it could be the thing that, you know, not weighing yourself. Um, for some people, I mean, really is the thing that gets them moving forward and just get, you know, really focus on your body and your body's needs and the supportive way you can take care of yourself, you know, not what's happening because that's not the full measure of how you're doing, you know, with your, your freedom process. So I hope this helps. There may be some exceptions I didn't list today, but again, if you're on your own kind of doing this work, it's really important just to stay off the scale. Um, when I was actually even in recovery in the anorexic part of my recovery, I didn't weigh myself. You know, and I was supposed to be trying to gain weight, and I was just like, the whole thing, the whole process is too much for me. I know what I need to do. I know that I underestimate need, my needs, so I need to eat more anyway. And those of you who are struggling with like, well, I don't think I need to gain weight. I'm in a higher weight anyway, but I still restrict. Well, you need to be eating more food, you know, and, and put aside these things about managing the weight because, um, you know, with your head, that needs to be worked on. Of course, it's a separate issue, but... Again, the more you can not use that piece of metal as a guide for how you're going to feed yourself, um, the more efficient your process is going to be. Now, I do have a, um, a blog post about this, but it, I took a different angle around the symbolic of what it means, like when you're looking for certainty, reassurance. I, you know, in your life, I see a lot of people use a scale for this, like a, a metal, like literally a metal stand-in for like, I'm okay. I know where I stand. I know how I'm going to feel today because, you know, they, you know, that, that comes from, um, um, you know, usually an old wound that, that needs to be healed. But I've got a blog post about that. Um, so I'm not going to go too deep into, um, the reasons why we use it besides like what's happening with my weight based on my food or whatever. It's a totally different topic. So I didn't mean to ramble, but just when, you know, there's lots of nuances to why people want to weigh themselves today. I strictly wanted to talk about I'm curious about what's happening. Well, do we need to be? I mean, I bet if you talk to a lot of people who are fully recovered, I don't, I don't know my weight. Um, cause I don't go to the doctor that often and hopefully not more than once a year, you know, for something. Um, and I just, I don't, I can, sometimes I know the number, sometimes I don't, sometimes I look, sometimes I don't. And it's, if I know or I don't, I don't care. It's like the sky is blue doesn't impact anything I do. If you're not at that place, I would recommend, I guess if I'm going to give you a bottom line statement, then don't do it. Focus on supportive eating, focus on wounds, you know, healing all your, your, your inner wounds around like living in fat public culture and how you're going to advocate for yourself and finding enjoyable ways to move that aren't obsessive. Um, focus on the things that matter, that number on the scale, it actually doesn't matter. You know, the things that make your life more full and whole that's what matters. So I hope this video was helpful. I rambled a bit. I apologize. Um, there's just so much I could talk about and I didn't have hours to do it today. So, um, hope that was the high points. Please share, you know, please pass this along to people that or tag them. They think that might be helpful for them because I know the scale is a big issue for people, but if you have one, get rid of it, please get rid of it. If you live in a household where it's like, it's not yours to get rid of, Ask them to put it somewhere else where you don't know where it's at if you are having a hard time not using it anyway. Um, I think there's, I think that's it. But um, you don't need to know the number. We don't. As humans, we lived centuries without knowing our mass. <laughs> so we don't need to know it now. I think it's especially important because if you don't have this head thing, you can focus more on the internal process. I think that's really important. So thank you so much, and I'll talk to you all soon. Take care.